my man Bryce Young. And I saw this story of how he went from 184 pounds to 204 pounds at the combine. How did he do it? Well, I call it fake weight. And I am a person that knows the fake weight process. Let's talk about it. Hmm. Because I did it. Um, one, I, I went from six feet, 180 to six, four, 280 in my years at Columbia Two, I was two fifty seven when I finished my last game at Columbia senior year. Um, by the time I was at the combine, which is what, two months later, I was two seventy one. I'm going to say it, even though y'all going to see me and, and disagree, pure lean muscle. <laughs> and then, uh, I went from two seventy one to two eighty two for my pro day. Why? Because it rigs the metrics. If you run a 4.6, which I did, at 257, all right, good, good. You run it at 282, which I did. Oh, my God. Becky, look at his butt. Don't you? Like, they lost their damn mind when I ran it at 282, a 4.61. They were like, shit. All my numbers was crazy because I had 282 as the backdrop. Now, what is fake weight? Fake weight to me is you don't need to be eating that, but you're eating that to gain weight. Fake weight to me is you can lose it if you want to, but um, it's a lot of water weight. What I started doing was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every night right before I went to bed in a glass of milk. I think a lot of people have heard of that, right? Right before you go to bed, right before you go to bed. I mean, you can't metabolize nothing. <laughs> and then wake up. That's some lean muscle if you're working out and grinding. Right. I started doing that. But then I advanced. So between the combine and actually pro day, what I end up doing. Let's be real, Wiley. A raw baked potato. Like, is that what they call them? Baked. No, it's not cooked, but it's the big boy. So the big boy. I don't know. I should be from Idaho. So the big old ones, what do they call them? Russin? Some the gigantic, not no normal as French fried potatoes. The big ones you're going to use to bake a potato. Eat that. I wet it and then just like that. Nothing else. Don't cook it. Nothing. Wet it. Woo. So good. And, and it's got a little salt in there. I don't know what. And that along with chugging. I mean, I had a jug. Remember Sports Nation? Like that big jug? Jug of water that I would drink four or five of those a day. Go, 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 go. And man, in one month, I gained 11 pounds of muscle and that's why my numbers went up like combine numbers went up from pro day numbers they just kept going up and it was more impressive because i had gained that weight so i saw that and i was like damn that's crazy uh he put on some weight and it made me start thinking about some freak stories out there like people have done some crazy stuff just to get drafted or you just saw some crazy cats in the process of the draft um you know, I, on this podcast, I can say stuff that is uh, colorful and people's like, oh, my God, you said that. But we used to say, don't look like Tarzan and play like Jane. And now they say, don't say that. But I'm going to say that because that's a real thing. Don't look like Tarzan and play like Jane. Oh, what do you mean about women? All right. Who's in the pros? That's a woman. Go. OK, that's what I mean. Like, look like you are the biggest, baddest, strongest dude. <laughs> and your ass ain't playing in the pros. <laughs> that's what I mean. Goodness. Don't take everything so personal. Um. Most interesting prospect at the combine this year was Anthony Richardson, right? That beast, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Big dog, big dog. But we also saw some other cats. Uh, Nolan Smith ran at 439. Good Lord from Georgia. He's a beast. Uh, Austin Mock, I saw, was talking about it. He was like, this dude was 99th percentile in the 40 in the vert and 96 in the broad jump amongst edge rushers. Goodness. <laughs> That's talking about winning. Um, I saw a couple other cats, a DN from Northwestern. He was 282. He ran a 449. Okay. Um, everything I just told you about me being 282, uh, erase it, retract it. This dude killing me. Goodness. Reminds me of Mike Mamula. Remember his his times? Um, I just got to just spitball some crazy stuff. Mike Mamula destroyed the combine. I was... I was in Dallas. I saw Larry Allen lift 700 pounds in the weight room before. Six something. I think it was like 700. I mean, I, I stopped counting how many plates and wheels were on that thing, but it was like, ah. Like, you imagine. <laughs> my elbows would have broke off. Like, 
<laughs> like hubcaps. Bye bye. <laughs> if you put that much weight on my chest, hell no. Nah. Um, Javon Curse, the freak, especially rookie year because that was the first time I saw him. Couldn't believe him when I saw him at the Pro Bowl. Like how long his arms were and how muscular he was. And I actually saw him about a year or so ago. He looks better now than he did then. And then he looked insane. It's crazy. This dude's a freak for real. But I remember at the Pro Bowl, coach said, um, run a 10 yards. So everybody lined up. I think it was like John Abraham and him and me and maybe Jason Taylor, all these cats. And he said, said, go. We all took one step. In the air of the next step for to get to like five yards of a 10-yard run, Javon Curse was finished. Javon Curse finished. <laughs> we were on our second step to get to the fifth yard. Javon Curse, the freak, was finished. I was like, damn. Woo, that boy was rangy. That boy was special. Oh, man. Uh, I saw my boy Antonio Bryant before. He was a beast. Uh, a lot of cats didn't know, but Antonio used to live. Like, he was like one of them. He, I don't know if he was street, but he had street tendencies. Like, you know, yakking and, and smoking blacks. You know, we all did that, but he would do it right before workouts. <laughs> Antonio did one one time. He did it one time before, like our combine test or whatever we had, our workout test, our conditioning test. That's what it was. And this sucker beat everybody on the team. And I swear he was just blazing some some black and miles in the car right before and had a little drink. I was like, dog, Antonio was different. He was special. Uh, Blitnikoff winner, too, as well. So I saw a bunch of crazy stuff in the combine, man. It, you know, people hate the combine. People love the combine. I love the combine. I'm a small school player who needed the combine because it's a level playing field. Therefore, you get to see the athlete you're drafting. Not necessarily the football player, but the athlete that can support the football player. I needed that. I can understand a guy who could just play football but looks and is built like a bathtub and built like a water balloon hates the combine because he's not going to perform well at the drills and perform well in the test. But you – you put me between them white lines and, and snap that ball, you're going to see something different. So there's different schools of thought. All that said, Combine was a blessing to me, brother. Helped me out tremendously, and I see us helping out some players this year, including my man Anthony Richardson. That dude might get drafted number one overall. Would he complete 53% of his passes? Insane. That's how the game goes. 